Hello, so we are going to work for the concept and production uh, idea of how to move into monetization. So you are making a game and you are making art for it and the art is absolutely gorgeous and fantastic. You've been thinking about this game for a really long time. But really what it comes down to is brass tacks. We have to figure out what we can do in terms of trying to make money at this kind of work. So I'm going to uh, talk through what that is going to be about. So I'm going to go on our course site um, under define your concept to example game docs. It's impossible. Uh, maybe not. Uh, we can make money at, at this kind of work. Uh, so initially in concept and production you did create a game overview. I talked about your characters and your highlights, your goals, your challenges, and you did an art breakdown. At this point in the semester, you are actually already done with characters, your level up possibilities, your weapons, your props, and those level up possibilities, as well as your environment and graphic user interface. So it comes down to monetization. What do we need to do to be able to prove to angel investors, to your mom and dad, to uh, your faculty, uh, your friends, and ultimately the buyers in uh, areas, what, what we can do in terms of making money. So if we go to on the site, define your concept and the page example game box, we'll get to here. And there is a slide on your slideshow that uh, goes over game overview, but there's also a page on there that has monetization. And the template that is on there will, will give you a couple of questions, but I'd like for you to kind of look at what some of the other students have done. So I've pulled up some of these examples. So income marketing, income for Anna's work, video ads for rewards, pay for in-game currency, marketing, pay to have a game advertised on YouTube. These are good ideas. And here we've got uh, the work by Michaela Barton, Faded Hearts. And if we go to monetization, uh, sh she was thinking about Faded Hearts will include an in-app store to allow purchases of platinum, a special in-game currency that can be used to access paid dialogue choices that will lead to an exclusive splash art and scenes of dialogue with each character. Prices range from $199 for 100 points to $19.99 for 1,200 points. These choices do not affect the player's ending or their relationship progress with the selected character. Relationships and endings can be reached without them. So also, uh, Michaela has done a really good thing in terms of giving the access to their social media accounts on that page. Jake Posh with the uh, game Lore has created monetization in this way. Watch a video to unlock the mission of the day. Pay for in-game currency to unlock the latest weapons and gear. In-game currency can also make your idle tasks faster. So uh, this, is, this is good stuff. Um, Jake's game is actually an entertainment-based game, so uh, just remember to, um, on that slide, uh, remove the words educational standards if you are um, working on something that is fully entertainment based. Uh, recognize who your audience is and how you're going to try to make some money from it. Uh, we'll move on to Eden's uh, work. Uh, Eden's work is for Catalysis, uh, which is a 2D game about uh, these characters that are trying to <laughs> work within these environments to solve puzzles. Uh, so it's, it's really quite a fun little game uh, starring Alberto and Penelope. Uh, so let me get to their monetization page. So Catalysis will have a one-time fee of $5 to play. No in-app purchases, enjoy, enjoy the game forever. So this is a, an interesting way, it's a little bit different than some of the other elements um, with no in-app purchases. There are some audiences that really uh, enjoy that component. Um, 
And uh, for one last review of monetization, I've got Hannah Miedema's uh, work here. This is for the 2D schedule game pitch, the Rails of Timor. Um, as you are all working towards finishing your work, uh, remember putting the work into a presentation mode like this. If there are clickable items, having a click-through set, this really feels like we're clicking through. There's an icon um, that doesn't look like the rest of the game. Uh, those are really good ideas to move through, so think about having that. So let me get into the monetization. This game will have the option to choose between free play with advertisements between levels or based on how much time the player has spent in the game and the option of the one-time payment ranging between five to $10 for premium version without ads. This allows anybody to download and check out my game and if they really enjoy it, they would have the option to upgrade to the premium version. Awesome. And again, we've got Hannah's uh, social media accounts so that people will be able to contact them. All right, so those are examples from the previous courses. I want to um, give you a, a couple of examples going a little bit further back um, with some game docs, uh, which is actually a, kind of an industry standard also. So um, this monetization uh, talks about ads that open up after the start of a game, players can purposely open up ads to earn in-game currency. Ads can be removed as a whole for real money, buying in-game currency with real money, buying power-ups or unlockable characters with real money instead of in-game currency. So we're seeing a lot of repeating elements there. Of course, um, uh, you're buying a game or you, you have some in-app purchases. Um, this is uh, an example from Fabian Franz uh, for uh, the game. Um, Mrs. Paints Drag Over, uh, and a, kind of a one sheet that goes through, the. it has the logo, it's got the, the icon that would be on the, uh, on the stores, the Google Play and the Apple Store, and then uh, examples of, it's basically a dress it all where you get to uh, place different outfits on uh, this character. Um, so it's pretty fun. There's the, uh, the dialogue screens there. So let's take a look at what Fabian did for some of the finalized work. Um, there's the graphic user interface um, completed. Uh, fill out surveys to earn credit. So that's an interesting one that we haven't yet seen. Um, surveys may be helpful to you to, um, especially when you're uh, first uh, testing out the game and doing user testing. Watch videos to earn credit. Um, this is a common thing where you're watching videos which are essentially ads uh, and buy credit with real life currencies. Another way to finish out your work is to show some accessibility. We've been talking about accessibility, so just doing a screenshot of the work uh, in the Dirtanopia color blindness mode um, will help to prove that your work is accessible for all. You can see that the um, elements that Fabian really wants to um, bring forward are coming forward and that um, functions well for the work in Dirtanopia um, compared to what it was for the, um, the original, which is up here. Um, because we really want to be able to look at these dresses and um, the underwears and look at the income amounts. So it's a really nice graphic user interface. Remember your graphic user interface needs to be um, clickable and uh, so button pushes is really what we're talking about because we're doing 2D uh, work for mobile. So there's not a mouse, there's no hovers, everything is clickable. Okay, so thanks to Fabian on that. We have um, a couple more examples. This is the last of the student examples that I'm gonna show you. Um, this is Cloud Sphere from Savi, and uh, the monetization and expansion, free to download and play, play to use character skins or other unlockables, updates with new environments and levels. Now let's take a look at, uh, Fabi, at Savi's uh, project here.
great. So Savi has really simulated the gameplay experience. We have uh, several elements that makes us feel like that. The uh, person holding the screen uh, is clicking through, uh, so we can really feel like we are the person playing the game. Uh, in addition to that, there is music uh, that helps us to uh, experience the game in a really nice peaceful way which matches the the content of the game. Here we have the click-through finger. It matches the kind of overall look of the design of the tablet or phone that Savi has created, but it doesn't look like what is on screen. So that's one of the differences that you'll need to kind of look for when you design these hands. They've also worked in After Effects to uh, do a real play through moving elements at the t at, uh, through the space and making it really feel like it is uh, a game. So this is a simulation that Savi completed uh, for the, the project. And yes, it was in concept and production. Uh, this wasn't uh, a requirement, but some of the students really will go above and beyond. And uh, Savi is the Excellence Award winner for 2022. So congratulations to Savi. Next, I want to talk about uh, my project, the Road Crew. And in this, I'm going to talk about um, a little bit more information about monetization. So with my project, the Road Crew, I have created these characters. And the Road Crew is something that I've been working on for the sabbatical that I had through Kendall College of Art and Design. The Road Crew is a learning tool animated series. So I'm going to take you through the website and also through the presentation because one of the things I want to talk about here is how to develop a monetization goal for your app, for your game, uh, or for your educational media. So on the website, uh, the objective is the very first thing that you're going to see. Children's behavioral issues create an obstacle to learning. Educators will use the Road Crew tool to teach young learners how to self-regulate behavior through a memorable interactive experience with relatable characters. Pre-K through second graders will learn to communicate their emotions with words instead of expressing them with their bodies in an unhealthy way. A universal design for learning approach will ensure students with a wide range of sensory and cognitive abilities will be able to engage. So it's really important to have your objective um, straight up in uh, the very first thing that they see. We should be able to see the purpose of the game and who the audience is and what you are planning to do, what are some of the goals that you have. So why? Um, I'm going into more detail with some facts and figures here. Uh, and this is one of the reasons, um, it, whether you're doing something for entertainment or something for educational purposes, uh, it, it's really helpful to, to talk about who your audience is, what are the numbers of people that can be beneficial um, recipients of what you're sharing. So why? One in six children aged two to eight has a mental, behavioral, or developmental disorder, according to the C CDC. Young learners are expressing anxiety with their bodies, throwing, and hitting, and biting. This is a natural way they understand communication works, especially if they're a child who has experienced trauma. Early childhood educators are looking for ways to transform violent behavior to a calm classroom where young children can communicate emotions like fear and anxiety in a healthy way. So this is one of the main characters, Izzy, from the road crew. and. Uh, Young learners can uh, learn coping skills for anger, anxiety, and sadness. And here's the whole road crew. Biff, Max, and Izzy is now the new name uh, with orange as the, uh, the color structure because one of the things that we found out in terms of universal design is that it was very hard to see uh, Lizzie in pink. Uh, and so she really stands out a lot better in the orange version off of the blue background that we use. We also, uh, based on uh, working with our, our audience, which is the young learners, uh, kids ages two to eight, recognize that L is a very hard 
word, uh, letter to say. Uh, it's one of the things that they work on with speech therapy. So we changed the character's name Lizzie to Izzy because it's actually how they would pronounce it anyways. So um, just not having that, that one barrier in there. And a little bit of information about the, the project, The Road Crew is an animated interactive series for pre-K kids that helps them develop coping strategies for anger, anxiety, and sadness using universal design principles for kids of all ages. And we go through the goals and uh, information about the universal design for learning. And there's more information here about the universal design. And the overview here is universal design approach goes beyond the technical requirements to the accommodation of persons with disabilities and towards their full participation in the ongoing social fabric of the world in which we all live. Universal design allows people of all abilities to experience media together at the same time, in the same place, on the same channel. The Road Crew animated series will integrate universal de design methods that facilitate a seamless and quality experience for everyone, including children and parents like these. So those with hearing impairments, so the sight impaired, blind and low vision, colorblind, light sensitive, physically disabled, speech disabled, cognitively disabled, those with ADHD, dyslexia and autism. So, so far in the development, we've integrated universal color and contrast. And so we're working with the red-green colorblind simulation like I just showed you. And this is the way that that really turned out with uh, the road crew, Izzy, Biff, and Max in full color uh, for common color-sided viewers. And the red-green colorblind simulation shows a consistent color and contrast. We also integrated visual narrative writing as if it were a narrative program. Or, I'm sorry, radio program. This allows the sight impaired to paint a picture in their mind of what is happening on screen. The characters on the panel explain where, react to the gross pile of cement. The characters on the panel explain I have a big old typo there. Gasping at the gross pile, they were disgusting. Max did not finish their job. So if the audio is coming across, you can actually close your eyes, experience this as if you were blind, and that's really the idea. Can we actually uh, experience the, the media without the visuals? Uh, that makes it hard for us as artists to think that maybe no one's gonna see the art, but really the challenge uh, with this kind of media is to make sure that all people can see it. So we're not leaving anybody out and that's really a big part of the project. Okay, so I really worked on monetization because I was working on the idea of getting paid directly for the road crew. So one of the components of that is the investors really want to see who the creators are. So the founder and CEO of the road crew is Susan Bonner and so I've got a, a short bio of the experience that I have uh, linking to different projects that I've worked on, uh, explaining uh, work that I did within the industry and uh, my connection to the Department of Education and the National Association of Advancement for Arts and Education. Bill Fisher is also uh, a main contributor for the project. Uh, we talked through his career uh, in the automotive industry uh, and as a product design manager for Lear Corporation and all the multimedia uh, design work that he did with Black Box, um, etc. Uh, and also we have Kelly Vajance, uh, who's a PhD, and her, her role is really uh, to bring uh, information about trauma-informed teaching practices and social and emotional health for young children and families, promoting high-quality caregiving and diverse learners, particularly children diagnosed with ADHD and autism spectrum disorders. So she is the expert um, bringing um, information to us. We also have the uh, amazing Chris Brown. Uh, he is a fellow faculty with us uh, here at KCAD uh, and in addition to that, he's got his own interactive multimedia business, Interactive Guru, so it talks through the kind of work that he's done. So having bios of the people that are a part of your project, um, yourself as founder and CEO, uh, go for it. And then advisors, uh, people that have influenced the project, people that uh, 
can give their clout and their buy-in to what you are doing. So that's on the creators. Um, I've gone through the universal design element. And uh, next I'm gonna go over the overview. So for the overview, which is basically um, in the class, the concept and production class, or perhaps in the thesis class where you are going to uh, talk through your project, um, this is a, a good example, especially for anybody that's working on something that might get government funding. I am working at getting funding through um, either the NIH, the National Institute of Health, or through the N. SF, which is the National Science Foundation. I currently do a lot of uh, reviews for the National Science Foundation and ha have attended a lot of um, informational sessions and seminars uh, for, for all of those. So um, that is really my main goal um, at this point is to monetize through uh, federal funding uh, and state funding. So this is going to talk through just the monetization element of it um, and how to, to build that. So the road crew this very first page really needs to to be almost the only page that you you can pitch from so this has the hands holding it it's the age of my audience uh, that i wanted to to be able to display and uh, it's got the main tagline the very shortest little elevator pitch um, showing the audience um, especially if it is a very special audience um, will be helpful to uh, describe to your potential investors, whether that's the government or your um, angel investors, uh, people that are going to fund the project initially. The state um, is one that you could do uh, because Michigan, we are very privileged to have uh, a lot of support. Um, and here in Grand Rapids, uh, places like Stark Garden. Um, so creating pitches is kind of important. Uh, create a problem like show what the problem is so here's the problem page uh 4.4 million u.s kids have anxiety that's the population of la and i'm showing my character um all along i'm going to be showing my characters kind of pitching this project also i've got my logo um, wrapped into it help kids cope so that's another uh way that uh i've got a kind of a little tagline uh, so the previous page was show the problem. Here is the solution. Give your project as a solution. Uh, talking about it being cross-platform. So for those of you guys that are making pitches, grab the visuals that we have for the phones and for the uh, computers and devices uh, that we have available for download here in the Digital Art and Design program and uh, place your work in there in Photoshop. Uh, really just making it look like it is an actual product. It's a simulation of it. So here's another problem page. Like, there's a problem, I'm gonna make it better, but the problem is even bigger than you might have thought. 47% of kids and trusted adults are left out of the current tools. That's a big problem, and it actually really gets um, the, the people that I'm trying to get funding from uh, to have buy-in on it. So we talk about the disabilities to find through the ICU framework, which is something that Bill Fisher developed, uh, which talks through um, folks with uh, hearing impairments and uh, color blindness, speech disability, etc. cetera. Uh, and I've got this character just being shocked at, at, wow, it's much more than I thought. And if you really think about it, people with this kind of abilities, uh, you will likely know people or even have, have some of those yourself. So the solution through my game is to develop calming hand moves. So here's some storyboards. Uh, my character will, um, they'll come in and animate and then uh, the hand will come in um, and go through different movements to help children to uh, relax. So make a tight fist uh, and then now relax. This is something that will help transform violent actions to calm hand motions, recognizing tensions, then relaxing. Used, this is used in preschools to understand the body, and it's a proven technique for pain management. And this is where my experts come in to play. I've got experts, um, not only those initial advisors I showed you, but people uh, in the, the industry for uh, social work and nursing 
and psychology, children's psychology, that are giving me information. A founding page, um, this is the previous work that I've done, uh, being able to show the work that you do, a little portfolio page, a little intro to the work that you did. You can see that that was on the website, but this is the actual the slideshow and who the advisors are. Um, kind of a fun page describing them in a very short information. And now we're going to really get into the monetization. So unlike the, the student work that you saw there, this is really wrapped into a business plan. So I've got the development phases from photo prototype to market are these, and there's uh, three phases. These phases are important because I had applied for the Michigan Business Accelerator Funds. And you can see that um, from kind of looking through this, that the state of Michigan has uh, $50,000 that you can get to accelerate your business. And this is what I had developed. Um, typically, the, the funding is about $15,000 that they, that they give access to. Uh, I thought that the project that I um, was working on could really move through um, faster. And so this was those phases, and then phase two and three coming from the NSF, which is the National Science Foundation, Small Business Innovative Research, SBIR. These are grants that you can get from the federal government, um, $300,000 for phase one, and a million dollars for phase two, but you have to get through phase two, um, uh, the NSF phase one in order to get to phase two. So I would highly recommend anyone that's doing any sort of innovative research uh, where you have a new kind of audience or you're solving a problem that the United States really needs to focus on to apply for these. And I can talk to you about um, any of those. I go through the uh, funding process, uh, making it kind of visual. Funders, helpers, and creators will make the the creators will make the proof of concept. Uh, that then will do the product validation testing. We will then have a product. Then we'll go back to the helpers and the funders. So just kind of visuals of what that looks like. Um, showing the process, the funds distribution, uh, the milestones. They're really looking for what is a timeline for your phases? What will you have complete by a certain day? Uh, how many kids will benefit? So starting with uh, small numbers, 100 uh, in Michigan, and then we kick it off to 6,000, and then this is the number of Head Start kids in Michigan, and this is the number of Head Start kids in the U.S. So you can see that uh, we are really exponentially um, expanding to kiddos that, that need our help. And uh, then scaling and uh, working on uh, more funds distribution and phase two funding. And you can see that KCAD uh, Innovation Center is a part of this. I'll uh, let you know at this point that this project is on hold um, while we work to develop a little bit more. Um, but this is um, the students at KCAD would be paid for their work uh, through the state funding. Um, and corporate funding, federal funding would all go through to the road crew. KCAD would um, give uh, money to the students because the state of Michigan would be giving money uh, to KCAD, to the Innovation Center. Um, that all helps to create the road crew and then we would have federal funding, the American Rescue Plan, um, with they, they actually have $12.7 million. That gets distributed to uh, districts, regions, school administrations, teachers, and parents. Um, we wouldn't get, of course, all of that money, but because there's an influx of money currently through the Biden administration, that money does allow them to solve problems like kids hitting in preschool. So um, we have a subscription business plan. The subscription would be $100 per classroom per year. Every family has access to 30 plus kids. There's $100 additional printed cool toolkit per year from the site. So this is something a teacher would do. And then $40 per year subscription for the parent. So you can see that there's different audiences and different uh, money amounts. Uh, the goal is that if you have school administrators, they're really the main influencers. 
and uh, so that's why they would they would purchase for classrooms. Teachers um, would purchase for their individual classrooms, but this might get uh, per per school system. There might be like ten different or twenty different classrooms that that would be paying into this annual subscription versus this would be like a one, one by one, and this would also be one by one. All of these are influencers to each other. So thinking about who are your influencers and how can you have them um, help you with money. So um, the money influx, <laughs> because ultimately you have, uh, they become buyers and influence other buyers. So understanding your market size, you can look up the entertainment market size, uh, the ed tech market size, and kind of uh, understand where you fit within that. So this is pretty popular to do in uh, pitches um, to understand what your market size is. So the ed tech market size uh, by 2027 is at $285.2 billion. The learning center's market size um, in 2017 was $10.2 billion. And the road crew annual aim phase two after prototype proof of concept in five years. Um, five years is something that uh, these investors and uh, grant agencies really want to look at. Um, once this gets going, there would be a $1 million uh, revenue stream. Um, that's the annual aim uh, within five years. Then we have the financial projections, um, state revenues, federal revenues, consumer revenues, you can see it starts to grow um, towards the end of the five years because uh, in the beginning we're dependent on the state and federal funding and uh, these are all things that I needed to have written out for the Michigan Accelerator Fund. And then I come back to the heart. Why now? So we just worked through like a lot of like financial information you know in terms of how this pitch uh, goes and so I'm going to take those investors back to why it's actually so important. So the social emotional learning is more important now than ever due to COVID-19. Childhood trauma and loss has increased creating more anxiety. Current tools are print based for the classroom and hard to take home. Parents are hand handing kids phones to calm them, but kids can't access that phone when they are in need. This tool gives kids a discreet way to cope with anxiety and feel ready, calm, and empowered. You seem worried. I can help. So this kiddo is um, in a crisis moment, and uh, if they have our app, uh, the characters will go through their own crisis moment and give a child a method of calming through those calming hand motions. Uh, here's our kids uh, saying thank you uh, for the potential of what the road can, crew can do for them and my social media and websites accounts and phone number uh, so that the people that are my audience, whether they are the angel investors, the federal or state funders can uh, get a hold of me. So the whole reason why I'm showing you this today is to really help you to understand as students here at KCAD uh, how to develop a business plan to access funding through uh, state and federal funds, things like the Michigan uh, Business Accelerator Fund, uh, the NIH, the NSF, these are all places with a lot of funding and um, my hope is that you may consider ways to um, bring an entertainment um, element to your uh, educational media, um, that there may be no difference between all of that to, um, to potentially create media that can change the world. This also functionally is very similar to what you would be pitching to um, investors for something for uh, true entertainment without education. Um, you would just uh, swap out instead of ed tech market size, you would look for the market size for the entertainment industry and try to explain how you would enter into it. Who are your investors? Who are the people that you are connecting with? 
who are your influencers, um, how much will they be paying you per year, um, create a, like a five-year budget plan. If you're really serious about this, um, you really need to think about what will it take to create the work, um, how much money will it take to pay uh, your, um, your employees, uh, so that all of the money from the uh, the revenues that you're getting is it all going towards paying um, employees and, and what is that cost how much will it take to make all the art do the um, d the development for the game uh, who would be the people that are part of um, your team think about um, it's not just going to be you none of this uh, kind of work is done alone who are your advisors and who are your artists and who are uh, new coders, things like that. So good luck with your own work and I'm excited about seeing uh, what you all come up with for your objective, your pitch, why what you're doing is important and who your, uh, your audience is.